Hi everybody, welcome to the Alexis K. Tyler Show. I'm not going to do <laughs> a full reading tonight. I um, just want to check in and say hello to everybody. And I'm representing the King Loke, King Nipsey Hussle. I love the blue bandana. So I'm going to get the flowers tomorrow. So this, this flower... Hey, <laughs> thank you for the hearts. I wanted to show it to you, see what you thought. Yes, represent them Lokes, King Nip. King Nip and bitch. And I decided to jazz my, my blue bandana up. <laughs> I love my baby. Um, I haven't been feeling that great. Uh, you know, when I, like I said, I have sinus problems and, uh, uh, like problems with my ear, sometimes my breathing, because we're dealing with the uh, mold in here and the fungus, mildew, uh, as well as the water leaks. So thankfully, I want to thank, I don't know if my baby Mina is here or Shannon is you here because Shannon just brought me some delicious pie. Thank you, Monica King, the queen dripping this bitch, King Loke and this motherfucker. Yes. Neighborhood in this bitch. <laughs> Shannon, you know, they fucked it up. We didn't have everything. She sent me, and it's so frozen, Shannon. I wanted to eat it so bad. I wanted some dessert with my baby, but I guess I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow and have some ordered if it's too late for them to fix it tonight. It's okay because they need to give you um, a refund for sending it all wrong. She was bringing me some um, some dessert, well, some, some dinner too, but. They got the order wrong, so I'm going to have to come back on tomorrow and share it. But meanwhile, um, I'm going to light his candles and say hello to he. Hello to him. So I got some candles over there. And, um, God, I guess I didn't eat eat today, so um, maybe that's good because I was able to get into this little jumper. I started exercising because when I, I've been so sick and feeling so under the weather i haven't been able to like run and do my squats and my booty exercises and stuff so <laughs> so i'm let me see i got my little let me see if you can see my little jumpsuit and if you can see it it's just see through it's like really cute really cute yeah, that's just my veins i don't know i gotta pick they look green I can't remember, that's Zane's. Um, my, my little jumper. My, I love them. I love sequins. I love see-through stuff. I love sheer stuff. And I was just playing around with the camera. I have been running the streets all day, so I wasn't able to finish. It's very important that I get to the reading, but at the same time, I can't. I can't say a lot of things over here, as you know. I get in trouble. Like, I'm already in trouble on YouTube. <laughs> I'm already in trouble because I talked about, um, I don't think I can say it here either, you know, like, jabs. And, um, um, different diseases and, I, I, you know, I can't say it. And because I said, Dr. Sabi, they suspended me. I'm not really feeling that great. I just wanted to do this for Nipsey because it's my baby. And I wanted to still give him energy, even though I've been going through, oh boy, what I've been going through. But what I was saying, can somebody share, can you put my cash app up there, please? And the PayPal, because I'm still dealing with what, I would just say free the girl. <laughs> still dealing with what I'm dealing with, um, with the issues with my landlord and the eviction stuff. And so your love, your support, your donations mean everything to me. So I'm really glad that people donate through PayPal. People donate through Cash App. It is helping me a lot because it has affected my health. I've been here for 20 years and uh, the mold and the fungus has been constant leaks. Even though they've cleaned up mold before, they had new floods, constant leaks in the pipes and stuff. And it has taken... It's toll on me. I can't really take it anymore. I can't really deal with it anymore. So it's made me very sick. And the past weekend, it's like I couldn't really do anything because I was in so much pain. 
in my head and just like swelling in my face and my sinuses it it um like now my eyes are still hurting a little bit but i still wanted to come on and uh give nipsey some energy so i'm not gonna stay long i just like to do these sessions for him when i feel good so even though i'm using this smoke because i'm like i better be careful using the smoke with my sinuses i have the um the vent on and the window open so it won't be as smoky as it was the other night uh, so if you don't want to see that just log off now um if you don't like that kind of thing the spiritual aspect of the sages because like i said he loves he loves these he gave these to me um he loves the blue sage so he taught me how to make them how to put his oils in them and to um love him and uh he needs the energy anybody that has been physically brutally murdered and they were not ready to leave and they're in a lot of pain they will hang on here they will come here but they will also go other places if you all haven't seen this to get an idea of what i'm talking about go watch hey lizette hey buddy hi sis Go watch Ghost with Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze. That's similar to what my relationship is with Nipsey and a lot of people that have this ability. To see them for that ringing sh turns the phone. I'm sorry. It doesn't usually do that. That's different tonight, huh? Um, somebody said something. I'm sorry if I missed, missed you. Um, I put this hair back because I, I love this hair. So I don't want to burn it because it's synthetic. It's not human. <laughs> so I have to find some human hair. But yes, watch that. It'll tell you a lot. And um, I'm going to go back over the old readings I did for Nipsey three years ago. Because there are things coming up now that people are confirming to me. That even when people said I was crazy, I never went back on it. I never stepped down. I never rolled it back for a motherfucker. No bitch made me not say what the fuck I said or unsay what the fuck I said. Unless you could prove I was lying or I was wrong. I'll gladly apologize. I've always said that. I live that way. I never believe I'm, I'm completely right about anything. I'm not one of those types of readers. I'm not one of those types of people that think you know every fucking thing and nobody knows shit. Unless, but you have to prove that I'm wrong though. Then I'll apologize and take it down. Most readers do not do that. It's I said what I said, and it is what I said, even if they're fucking wrong. Sometimes people are wrong if you're in a human body. My very first reading on King Nipsey Hussle, Aramis Joseph Ashkenaz, um, I said he came in here and told me when I showed him the short video of his mother, Angelique, saying that a psychic called her and told her she spoke to Nipsey, and Nipsey was shot but didn't feel any pain. And that he got up and shook Eric Holder's hand and then chased him. And when he came in here, he said, good morning. I said, hi. He said, what are you doing? I have some folding clothes. Come in. Come in my bedroom. I said, I want to show you something. Come here. I turned the phone on. I said, look at this. Is this your mother? He said, yes, that's my mom. Listen to this. And I started to play it. And he said, no, no, that's not what happened to me. I said, it's not what happened to you. He said, I wasn't shot with one gun. I was shot with two guns. I said, what? You were shot with two guns? And he said, yes. A silver revolver and a black semi-automatic. And then a few months later, he said, tell him it was a nine millimeter. So I did the reading again. I looked over. I started, he had me looking at bullets and types of bullets. And he said, there were different guns there. And there were dummy guns or trick guns, guns twisted around and he told me it was like a hollow point but it was a different type of hollow point not called a hollow point but something else so that as soon as you shoot the target or the human it goes inside of the body and when it hits solid mass especially if it even if it's bone but especially if it's soft tissue it's going to go in to it and then explode and break apart which would cause all of his tissues to tear up and it's just pieces of metal going in different directions so that means it's constantly traveling until it hits a point where it can no longer move forward 
This is the type of bullet that he told me he was shot with. No other psychic medium or psychic whatever reader said this but me. And I started to say where it was, back of the head, in the spine, under here, in the lung, in the other lung, in the face. Not going deep into the head. Bruises, contusions, scratches down here, all around the back. Clearly somebody was jealous of his face and his beautiful hair, beautiful teeth. Down here, down in the groin, down in the abdomen, down in the leg. They put on the news he was murdered March 31st, Sunday, 3.30. I'm telling you, he was murdered Saturday night. Saturday night, late at night, going into Sunday morning, between 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I keep feeling deeply by the time the sun wakes up, we get to 6 and 7, the sun rises, he was physically dead. Maybe still a little bit alive, in and out of consciousness, body and rigor mortis. I've always said that, and people said I was crazy and I was a liar, and nobody has proved that I was a liar. As a matter of fact, you can go on YouTube and listen to people read the transcripts from Eric Holder and the driver, the girl driver that was from, what do you call it, um, Hoover's. She says to the DA at the grand jury hearing, when Eric Holder got back in the car, he has two guns. You can't make this up. And I said it a few days. Thank you, Tamara. I'm glad you like it. I was hoping y'all like my look. I just came with I want y'all to check out my, my um, neighborhood 60s. You know what I'm saying? Repping my goddamn nigga King Nipsey Hussle. Goddamn it, this bitch. The King Loke. I'm saying got my blue bandana on. <laughs> he told me to wear it, so I'm like, okay, eight six O D and it's bitch, okay. <laughs> Neighborhood. Um, can't make this up. I did the reading the day he was shot. They say he was shot allegedly. We know that was hours, over twelve hours after the physical shooting, and he's talking to me. So I, it took about a week. I released it, what, April 6th, 7th, somewhere around there. That proves to you, if you look at the original date of my first readings, there's no way I could have gotten that information from a grand jury or from an autopsy from the coroner because it had not been done. It had not been released. I released my first reading on him a few days after the assassination. Well, shit, get a breast job. I want one, too. <laughs> As you say, I have no tape. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I showed a little bit of my nipple. But, hey, that proves to you I'm not lying. I have no tape, no breast glue, no, no nipple glue, nothing to hold the babies up. <laughs> At my age, I, they just, they sit. Now I got to lift, start exercising because I've been so out of it that I've laid down a lot. I got to lift the ass because I don't want to ass. Um, I don't want implants. I, I'm kind of thinking about the butt lift thing. But I might do that. But I got to extra. I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't mean to do that. I just wanted to show you I wasn't lying. I had no tape, glue, nothing on the girls. They're, <laughs> they're sitting. You know, I always worried about that. And I'm like, oh, my God, when I get older, will I look like some of the other women I've seen with titties long? Luckily, but see, this is what I do. I have a breast cream. And when you when you do your breast, it's just like if you go to a European or a Russian masseuse or anybody else that knows what they're doing, when you massage the breast to lift them, really, you want to do the face. You want a face massage. It includes the neck and the decollete. So I do my face here, neck, chest, breast. Okay, if you go get a massage, you want here, up, here, down, all of that massaged. I, I don't care if you are a homo, that's fine. I like when, when gorgeous women flirt with me. Not an ugly bitch. Not nothing hanging. Okay, I like when pretty women compliment me. Okay, so even if you're a homo, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. That doesn't offend me. 
So that's what I do. I have the creams for the face, the neck, and I peel down all the time and I massage and exfoliate and I wrap my breast in plastic and then put the bra on top and I sleep in it so they can stain and penetrate the cream deep down and the exfoliating acid so that they peel and get, remember how I told you all that was, was um, brown, like bear claw stretch marks. Now you see it's nothing. That's what I don't care what people say about me. It's nothing. I don't give a fuck. Because I'm happy now. And I'm at peace. And I can take my clothes off. Wear a bikini if I want to. Get a stripper pole. Pop my ass for my nigga. When I get one. When I get a new one. Because you know I'm getting out of something. Okay. <laughs> at this age. I feel incredible. Ooh. See I got my door cracked. So the bugs are coming in. That's fine. Because I wanted to be able to breathe. Get your ass out of here. Fuck along oh, big spider. But anyway. Thank you. When I said these things, you can go back and verify and look at my readings. I have no reason to make this up and the dates are there. So nobody can call me a liar. I saw the two guns. The girl that was driving for Eric Holder, that um, pop it. Yes, I got to get back in shape, baby, and move around because I've been so... Thank you, sweetheart. I'm trying to... Um, get my breath and everything, get rid of all the infections from the mold in here. Luckily, you know, they're going to clean that up. And uh, then I can go to the doctors and find out how to fix this so I can stand up and walk and all this stuff. And I can, I used to run. I love to run every day. And that makes your body incredible. You don't have to do a lot of crazy weights and stuff if you run and you do a lot of aerobics and uh, what I oh yes what I also got from the California girls was Pilates so that'll slim me down because I kind of want to slim the tits down a little because I'm like I've never been this juicy <laughs> except for when I was pregnant that's one thing about being pregnant I didn't realize a lot of men love to have sex with pregnant women because they're juicy and everything's hot and warm and swollen and wet and gushy on a woman's body when she's pregnant. Everything's sensual. We feel, I felt so ugly because I was so fat. But then men were hitting on me. And I'm just like, you think the big stomach and everything is sexy and big tits with milk leaking out of them? They're like, oh my God, I'm so, I love having sex with pregnant women. I didn't know that men had that fetish. Anyway. So Pilates. I'm, I can get back into that now. I'm going to make my, change that to my workout room since I'm, getting rid of stuff and throwing stuff away, old stuff away. But the girl says this. Um, the Hoover girl says that Eric Holder had two guns. And the lawyer said, well, um, so describe them. And she goes, one is a silver, out of all colors, a silver revolver and a black semi-automatic. When did that come out? Well, I, but I'm not that big to me. I'm not that tall. So I don't want to look all this bulk and this little body. That's why. If I was taller, I think it'd be easier for me to handle it. Um, nobody has said I was lying. I'm waiting. And I, I don't have a problem with it because I could have seen that wrong. And I want it to be. And that's what I'm going to do. When I get well and get situated, because so many people have asked me about this, and I used to want to do this. I wanted to find a psychic school. White people and people of other races have psychic schools. I know because I've been to them before, and I've interviewed about being a student, and it is very hard. And one thing I realized was some of the white people that I've hung around and done readings on went to these schools, and they go to these schools. They spend thousands of dollars going to special psychic schools. So I'm saying that to say this to you. When you look at these movies on Netflix and uh, Hulu and these other places about psychics in the military and you think that shit is... Well, thank you, Tamara. I, I think I'm going to lose weight in some places and gain it in others. So as I start to work out, I'm going to let you see me work out and you just tell me what y'all think about this part, that body part, that body part. <laughs> and I'm going to take your advice into consideration. <laughs> but this is real what you're seeing because I've personally been around it. And 
Another thing that was disappointing to some of the ones I was around was that they spent all of the money to go to the schools. And I could see and hear all of these things. And I'd never been to anybody's school, never been trained. Uh, they said, oh, you have to meditate a certain amount of time. I never meditated. I was just a child doing it. And I will say this. Some of the TV shows I've seen before are true. With some traumatic experience I've had in my life, it made me more psychic. I don't want to say, let's say consciously. Like some people have been to, through a coma, they were very stressed, they died and came back, and when they physically got back in their body, they could see and hear people on the other side. That happens, and it's happened to me. I don't know what triggers it subconsciously to make you consciously more aware and more psychic, but it happened to me. Um, even in a surgery, I, I was... Um, Maybe asleep about three or four hours, I think. And I woke up. And when I woke up, I heard everything. And I heard what some of the people that were helping with my body were thinking, feelings. I, it, it, it's like they touched me. I could feel everything in them. And when I went to my hospital room to recover, they were there. And they told me, we've been following you for a long time because we know your mother wanted to kill you. We've been stopping her from killing you, even though she abused you, she thought about and wanted to kill you a lot of times. We intervened. And even the times you weren't around her and you were abused by people and molested by people, you thought that was a bad thing. In a way, it was a good thing because she would have killed you because she was a junkie and a hoe. She was a beautiful hoe, but she was a whore. I'm not just saying that because I don't like my mother. And I saw it. As I got older, my mother fucked a lot of men. Not be, she just because she wanted to, she was married at the time, like the fuck a lot of men. Anybody that was a challenge to her, like not fuck a wino. Okay, let's say we go to the clinic. She sees a doctor. It's my doctor. She wants to fuck him. I think maybe because so it's my doctor. It's her doctor. She wants to fuck her doctor too. And she starts fuck. I mean, that's just what she does. A lot of women are like that. That's why a lot of sons hate their mothers because they saw them do fuck shit when they was growing up that you think a little boy didn't fucking see. My mother's just like that and a drug addict and a drunk, but she was functioning. She made a lot of money. She was very attractive and very successful. I would try to tell people and they would think I was fucking lying unless they were around her. And when they got mad at her, they would fucking tell. We was all getting high together. We snorted powder and everything. After her church service, when she closed church service up, we went to such and such a house and we all snorted powder and everything. This, you know, fucked around and shit. But she knew how to function and do what she did. So these beans are in my hospital room and I'm basically half conscious. And I, But I can see them. I can hear them. God damn Y'all motherfuckers just love to come where the fuck I am. It's this thing. I don't know what the fuck this thing is. We got some long ass. It's flying around my... See, I'm going I'm to go close my screen. Um, But I just... Oh, God, you guys. Why you come right here where I am? Oh, I need my spray. Because y'all just like to do that shit. And you like to do it on my camera too, don't you? You want my attention... I wish you could see this thing. It, it's not poisonous. It's just one of those things with the long legs like that. They, wherever I go, they like to come to the, in the room where I'm at uh, to stop what the fuck I'm doing. The, now it's sitting somewhere. Are you sitting? Anyway, I don't want to talk too much because I got to close the door and I, I just want to do this a little bit and say hello to you while I could get up out of the bed. Hold on. Who is it? It's who? Hold on. Wait a minute. Y'all going to the door with me because I don't know who the fuck this is. Who is it? Oh, you brought me some more food? Yes. Thank you, sweetheart. No problem. You too, baby. Hey, thank you, Shannon. <laughs> thank you, Shannon. Okay. Now we got, uh, hold on. Good. I'm glad my door was cracked. Uh, luckily, 
No, I can't eat pizza, baby. That was just my dinners with my mashed potatoes. Pizza, I cannot eat white flour. Pizza and shit like that, it clogs my gut. Sorry, it's, it's food I have to cook. I don't fuck with pizza. No, no. Uh, do you really think my stomach would be as small as it is if I fucked with pizza? White flour, breaded meats, fried chickens, I love, but I cannot eat. Popeyes, all that kind of shit. I do not eat because the white flour's dead. And thank you, baby. It's my jumpsuit. My I love my jumpsuits. I love lacy and see-through jumpsuits. Nipsey helped to give me the courage to wear them. And since you all like them, y'all give me the courage too. <laughs> so I'm going to get it in even better shape for my age so that it really looks banging for the summer. You know, it's going to be hot soon. So we'll have an excuse to be half naked <laughs> and go outside half naked. So I'm getting using all my creams and exfoliating everything so it's nice and even and buttery. It's just like when I had the um, this little thing here, I won't do anything to it. I'm just letting it go slow because when I had the red wig on and my skin got irritated, I scratched and accidentally scratched too much skin off of it. And so it's like keloid. It's really thick. But I'm just putting a little acid on it at the time. I'm going real gentle with it because I got the skin all around it the way I like it. And I don't want to tear it. So I'm just being really careful. Just slowly and gently. I squeeze it every day because my skin keloids. When I'm one of those types of people, I get the hypertrophic scarring and the, and the keloids. So I, I am letting you see it. And you'll watch me be very loving to it. Don't hate an area even if it makes you feel bad and it embarrasses you uh when it's damaged because like i said the other night i couldn't show any of this um what was that 99 2000 20 years ago i couldn't because it was so torn up and discolored when i'm one of those types of people like i have a little makeup on it now but it's chocolate when i get a scar or damage or something. I don't know if a lot of you that are lighter skinned um, scar that way. My scars turn real chocolate brown. Not good. So that's why I look like a cheetah. So, um, yes, I have red, I have more than one red jumpsuits. So that's why I created my formulas because nobody would help me and no dermatologist would help me and they treat people of color like they're crazy. Um, I had to exfoliate all of it down get all that dead skin down so you will notice as you exfoliate your skin how whatever system you choose mine or someone else's but i personally use everything i sell um that wouldn't be right if i don't know how it works and i lie to you and i tell you that it works and then you see me oh i got your ass i got your ass you, i thought i hit you jump oh I'm going to get you. He was sitting down. I almost hit his fucking ass when he was near my shit. My crystal glass. I'm going to break it. I'm going to get your fucking... Keep buzzing around, bitch. Keep fucking zooming around. I hate that shit. When I'm talking and then they zoom around in my goddamn face the side of my fucking eye. So, hey, Ricky. So, the side effect of it is going to lighten. Of course, it's supposed to because it's so dark, dead skin. Okay? So... I'm glad now I can show you and you see I'm not lying. The only thing I was disappointed in is I tried to find some old pictures as I had my baby where you can see the stretch marks on my skin. I'm going to look for them because I think I got it so you'll know I'm not lying when I was a young girl. And I couldn't wear young girl stuff and I wasn't happy being a young girl. And a young woman, that's what young woman, I was in my 20s I, when I had my baby, I was 21. And all the fun stuff I saw the girls my age wear, I couldn't. And it was very embarrassing. I'm like, I'm stuck with this. And my grandmother said, you just have to accept that you're stuck with that for the rest of your life. And that made me prove her wrong. Because I said, but you're an older woman and you're my grandma. But that's not always true. Older women don't always have wisdom. They're not always smarter than you. That's why I still have most of my girlfriends are not my age. They want to be my friend. <laughs> so most of my girlfriends some of them are in their 20s some of them are in their 30s a lot of them are in their 30s and a lot of them are in their 40s i don't know why but i love it because they teach me things i don't think i'm 
better than them. I don't think that I'm smarter than them. A lot of them have college degrees. I'm so proud of my baby. She's in her late 30s and she's been going to school since she was born and she's getting ready to get her PhD. She's a doctor. So things that she probably should ask me, she'll ask me stuff that, that she doesn't know about love and men and relationships. And then I'm like, I got to ask you something. And she's like, yeah, what? How do I write this paper or what does this mean on a medical level? Or what's this medication? And can you teach me this? And, and she's like, oh, sure. And I'm like, you're not looking down on me because I'm older and, and you think I should know because basically I've been isolated in a really fucked up abusive relationship for 20 years. So I didn't get to go to college and none of that shit and raising a baby who stayed in and out of trouble. So she goes, no, I'm honored to know you because you give me insight and you give me spiritual insight. And you, she's like, what's going on with this? What's going to happen with this school? What's going to happen with this man? So we trade. I don't try to act like I'm their mom and I know everything and you listen to me. And, I, and they say, I'm going to do this. And I'm like, can I tell you what I think? But it's your life and it's your pussy and you use it the way you want. But I'm going to tell you what I think because I used to be your age using my pussy like you doing. And I know what's going to happen because you see what the fuck I'm going through that I have to get out of. And they're like, okay. And they're respectful and they listen. But they still, you know, have their own struggles, their own lessons because it's not my life and it's not my lesson. And I get mad at them. And I'm like, why can't you just do what I told you to do? And then I have to say, it's not my life. It's not my experience. I can see it, but she can't because I've been where she's been, but she hasn't been where I've been. So I have to learn boundaries and not try to make people be what you want or live the way you want because you see the storm, but they don't. It's no truth like self truth. No matter what I say to you, if I've been where you are and I've been your age and you haven't been mine. So I already see it and I know it. Just like if I was their age, older women tried to pull my coat and I don't want to believe them because the nigga and the dick was saying something else. See, a lot of times we're going to listen to what that dick saying, what that dick do. Because we believe in the dick. We trust, we want to believe in the dick. We put the dick on the pedestal. So he's saying one thing with this head, but many times you think he's saying it with this head. He's only saying it with this head, not because he means it, but, but he's in love with that head. So he's going to say whatever it takes to get Mr. Jimmy scraped. Whatever make Jimmy happy. So he gonna say what the fuck he know you want to hear and what you want to motherfucking believe in. So you talking to dick. And another woman that's been through that, lived through that, older than you had to pay no that is saying, don't trust that nigga. And the nigga saying, don't trust that bitch. Trust this dick. Trust me and this dick. So, <laughs> so I love talking to the younger women because I feed off them. They feed off me. I learn from them. They learn from me. And then sometimes they be like, she was telling me like, girl, fuck that nigga. Don't trust that nigga. Girl, get the girl. Ooh, he told me he want to put you out. The nigga, girl, get the fuck on. Fuck his motherfucking ass. I hate it. And I'm just like, <laughs> really? She's like, girl, really? And she's in her 30s. So, <laughs> so all my, my women, I don't know why I don't have, when I was younger, I used to, to, have older women that talk to me, but they were no fucking good. And a lot of them was getting caught up in the same shit. Young girls was getting caught up. Young girl dick tricks. Still fantasizing about a husband, somebody coming, a knight in shining armor, sucking dick at fucking 60 years old. I don't, I'm not that and I never want to be that. Now, I don't get a lot of older women being my friends. I get the younger women to be my friends. And this generation of young women I'm so proud of they're phenomenal they're incredible nobody holds them back they love me they love Alexis K Tyler vagina power when I started 20 years ago my own generation hated me and tried to destroy me tried to shut me down uh with the Jesus shit and the false beliefs and now these women here do what they want believe what they want get their own education make their own decisions about love life religion spirituality and who they listen to and who they don't and nobody stops them or stands in their fucking way and they like Alexis K Tyler vagina pepper <laughs> they want me to bring that back and they love the real talk and some of them are like I wish you were my mom. I wish you were my aunt. I done told y'all, call me. If you're going to call me something, we got the new hashtag. It's Queen Drip. Yes, it's, it's Supreme Mother Drip. If I don't know. Maybe you can call me TT Drip. I don't know. <laughs> 
Queen Mommy. God damn it, Queen Mommy drip. Supreme Goddess drip. Of course, vagina power in this bitch. You know. So, uh, <laughs> they helped to resurrect me and make me viral and talk about me again and keep my name going. And so I'm going to honor you the same way you honor me because I've been so disrespected by my own age group and from the South. Um, it's like the, the South is more open now, I think, because we have a new energy. We have a new mindset of women that are all about me. And that's what got me in trouble. You know, already my childhood taught me to be a victim and be a follower and just giver and not demand uh, to be equal and balanced. They give me the way I give them. Now, uh, because of, of so much trauma and bad family and all those things, I guess I'll, I'll probably get into it later as I really start to write about it because this experience right now that has been so painful for me and, you know, dealing with, you know, my ex-lover in this situation and living here, I'm not angry, you know, like today. I mean, even though I don't like what I've gone through with my health and all this stuff, almost being destroyed because of the stuff in here. But, you know, it's I'm having it cleaned up. And um, it's like with Nipsey coming into my life, that helped make me stronger. And the things he says to me helps me be tougher and not be a punk bitch in other ways. Because I was always strong, always a survivor, lived outside in the cold. In the bitter cold. I'm tougher than what people might think I am. But. With that. And then with this situation happening to me now. It. I think it was necessary. It, it was needed for me. And, you know. We, so we're not going to do like a deep reading tonight. We're just doing like I mentioned the bullets. We're, we're going to get into that when I come back. I was just saying that nobody proved me wrong. And, and it, it was proven. It was accurate what I said. You know, how people always make fun of me and laugh at my readings. I'm just going to laugh at anything I do. It, everything's always funny. And, and, and unfortunately, it's a lot of women that like to do that kind of thing. So the younger women help me to stick to it. No, you're not going to change it because they can see too. A lot of them are born seers and psychic mediums. So they would say, no, that's correct, Miss Alexis. And no, you, you stick by that. And we see that. And we love you. And we're going to ride with you. And we're going to donate to you. And we're going to pay for your readings. We're going to pay for your products. And they do. So I, I said that. You have to say that about me being accurate. I was the first one to say these things. And I like to always honor him. No matter how bad it's been for me. I love him. I honor him. I respect him. He loves me. He honors me. He respects me. That's my homie. My teacher, my lover, friend. That's my beautiful. That's my spirit, nigga. That's my spirit, husband. I don't care what nobody say. I, I love love. That's my baby. And going through this made a lot more like a regurgitation of pain. And we go more into vagina power. And it takes me years because it's so much pain. And that's what will happen to you. People, why don't you get, why don't you get over it? I mean, you were a five, you know, um, that was 20 years ago and, and you're still talking about it and you're still going to therapy. You can't determine the timeline of when somebody heals and when they don't and when they're in crisis and when it begins and when it ends. Because just like it's done to you over time in layers you have to undo it and work through it with the, in the right way or get the right people to help you to show you or you learn as you go in layers. There's no limit on that. And so it, it's triggers. And that trigger will either make you run because you it's too hurtful, you don't want to deal with it. Hey, Gwen. Or it makes you stop and it makes you break down, drop and roll to learn how to protect yourself as you're moving through releasing another level and layer of trauma and pain and letting it just ooze out. And in this situation, it took me to a level that I've always wanted to go and it dealt with another level of fear that I saw people comment and they said, how could you? They said, as soon as I saw a rat, I would have left all of my shit and went and bought some new shit and bought a new house. I don't see how you could do that. And I was like, I, 
I didn't want to do that. You think I wanted to do that? <laughs> I could, I guess, you know what? He's right. I could have done the same thing. But to me, it was spiritual. And it was metaphysical. Every lover you have, every lover you don't have, every baby you have, every baby you abort, every baby you miscarry and you don't have, every relationship, a certain thing or goal, anything you want to have and you don't have, there's always a reason and there's always karma involved and there's always a lesson. And if you run from it and you duck relationships and you duck responsibility and when somebody comes to you in a relationship and they're having a problem with you and they don't want to quit you and they don't want to make it, they don't, they want to make it work and they say, you always attack me. We always fuss and fight and I don't want to have a divorce. So I don't want to break up. And every time something comes up, you say it's me, but it's also you and you don't want to be checked. And then either the woman or the man always get the fuck out of here or they talk over the person and they shut them down and they turn away and they walk away because they don't want to face the issue. That is somebody refusing to deal with anything hurt or unresolved within them or the karma as well as the spiritual metaphysical side of the pain or the confrontation that causes you problems over and over and over with relationships and love or a lack of love and constantly attracting dysfunctional, abusive relationships like I did in the past. So when I sat here and the rats were wanting to run towards me, like you see the insects wanting to fly towards me, (laughs) I sat in the middle of my bed and I said, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to stay in the house with them. Because I don't know why they came in here. A whole bunch of them brought the the mama rat, the daddy rat, and a whole bunch of babies. They fucking over here and got a whole bunch of fucking babies in the house. But instead of me running and screaming, and I, you know, of course, called the exterminator and cleaned up because I I, re- I didn't know the danger and they carried COVID and other things. I I said I don't want to run from this because I know they're everywhere and animals are everywhere and animals love me and animals talk to me and they come to me in readings with people that come to me if they have a pet the pet will come to me and talk about the owner and I'll say hey did you do this to this dog did you do this to this cat matter of fact did you give a dog away because the dog is coming and say you gave it away or it died and it's hanging around and you won't talk to it so I'm like okay the rats are coming here And I knew that if I run from that, even though they're not a human, it's still connected to a human experience and a previous dysfunctional human relationship. So I um, said, I'm going to sit here with them and I want you to tell me what you want to tell me. Because if I leave and I run away from you, I'm going to run into you by running away from you. I'm going to run away from you this way and I'm going to turn around and run into you somewhere else because they're everywhere. And if it's not me, it's going to be a neighbor or somebody in the neighborhood that had them. And they're going to walk from there and say, mm, we want to go to Alexis's house. You know, our cousins were at our other house. So we think we're going to check. Things, everything has a synchronicity to it. Humans, animals, it doesn't matter anything about where you're from, your race, your ethnic group, male, female. Many times entities in their life will be connected to you. If you're drawn to them for some reason, they're drawn to you, whether it's positive or negative. And it's something, if you sit with yourself and you refuse to run and you look at it, it's something from your childhood or your past. And I know a lot of times I ran from things or I had a lot of fear of things and fear of certain animals and negative stereotypes and rats were one. As you... You see, I'm in the same house and you don't hear anything. And they're not here. They, but now they still have to repair all the holes, but they're not in here. And they haven't come to eat anything. And I'm not scared. I sleep better and I don't worry. Once I made peace with them and I started to talk to them and hang with them because they like to come hang near me. I'm like, hey, y'all, the food is downstairs. So I guess you want to know me because I... You've eaten so good and you look very fat. And people were saying that <laughs> they were like, your rats look very fat and healthy and their hair looks strong and shiny. I'm like, they eating on my fucking soul food. Of course, they will look like I do. <laughs> shiny, strong hair and skin and shit. They eat my shit. So I just surrendered to them. Instead of being terrified and scared, I didn't sleep for like a month. I haven't turned my lights off. Uh, uh, that was too much now, but now I turned them off. Like the lights out there when I went to the front door, I turned it off. Um, I don't know. I just, you know what? 
And I want you to try this. If you don't have an animal problem, that's fine. But I want you to try it another part of your life. The part of your life or the person that you worry about and you fret about and you're so in love with them. And then, then you broke up and you don't think they're going to come back. And you don't think they're going to love you. And you don't think they're going to want you. And you talk about it to everybody. And you worry about it and you stress about it. You can't eat or you can't sleep or you drink or you overeat. And and um, you're wide awake all the time because you're in a, in, in a severe depression about this person. Let it go. I didn't say let them go. Let it go. To the point that you're relaxed about it. And it's like whatever it's going to be is whatever the fuck it's going to be. This is not the only man or the only woman in the world. I don't have to have this person. I was born without this person. I'm going to die by myself. They can't be there and go with me. And let me learn the lesson. Let me look at me and, and take this time. They're not speaking to me or coming around or we're not fucking or whatever. And I get to look at me to see why this happened. And this, this happened to me before. And why do I keep attracting this type of man or type of woman that we get close and then we push away and then we argue and fight and they say it's me and I say it's them. But everybody I've been with always says it's me because I don't want to deal with me. And I really want them and I'm not ready to let them go. And I'm not ready to deal with me either. Let it go. I'm not saying don't talk to them. If they call you, if they come around you, don't chase, don't beg, don't worry. Because worry never fixed anybody or anything. If that's what you call a proactive approach, wrong. But if you try that, it's not working. You're just wanting and needing. I can't live without this person. I can't eat, sleep, breathe. And you've done all of that. Give it to God. While you give yourself to yourself and your love to yourself and fall in love with you and give yourself to God. And you spend every day, you get up and you create a schedule around you and about you and creating peace within yourself. Because that's very bad if you feel like you can't be happy and you can't live unless a certain man or woman is in your life and they didn't grow up with you and they went in your life before and you was living and you was fucking fine. When you get down to it and you realize, like I said, I surrender to the rats. It's like y'all ass is here. You coming in and out of here. I can't seal up all the holes. I'm fighting with the goddamn landlord and he's blaming me. I'm blaming him. Uh, we're fighting every day. He wants to kill me. I want to stab him. And they're here. I'm like, but after all that, they're here. And they like being in here with me. And I'm terrified. So I said, fuck it. I'm not scared of y'all. Y'all could have a living room. Y'all already made your damn house in my fucking wall and carved an apartment, a condo, a mini condo within my condo in my fucking wall, arched the doorway out, tricked it out and every fucking thing. Y'all got your drinks. Y'all drinking my liquor and shit. My college green Fine. I can't run you all out. So we're going to sit with this a minute. I'm going to talk to you and I want you to talk to me. And we're going to see if we can be buddies since we are stuck living in the same house because y'all invaded me and you don't want to leave. And I ain't going to leave right now, goddammit. So we're going to have to figure this out. What attracted me to you and what attracted you to me? And when I said, fuck it, they're in here. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm tired. I'm not going to sit up all night. My eyes bucking. Did one jump on the bed? Do I hear something? Did it all a crack? Oh, the nigga walked up in here. So I'm just like, fuck it, y'all. Y'all want to walk in here? You can walk in here. You want to get on the bed? You can get on the bed. I'm just over it at this point because I can't. I can't do anything about it. So I surrendered. But I could. I surrendered. That's what I could do. I surrendered. As I started to do that and I said, okay, now what is the plan? Am I leaving? When am I leaving? How am I leaving? What are we going to do? How am I going to get them out of here? So yes, I called the exterminator and all that and put the traps down. We started catching them and I stopped putting the food out. I realized I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't put it on my altars. I have to find another way to deal with this or just eat with the my ancestors and then throw the rest away or put it in the refrigerator uh, because they like my food. They like my energy. And I could, I understand why, because I'm like, what attracted me to them? What attracted them to me? I give my heart and my soul. I give my all into my food for the people that I love, that have physically died, that have come here. I take honor in it. I take great pride in it. Then I'm picked as, oh, see this thing? Okay. Oh my God. You just keep it up. I'm going to get you in a minute. Um, I think no matter how bad you think animals are and their strays and stuff, they still respond to love. They respond to people loving them and giving them energy. Like some nights I'll be up like I'm doing now and um, I'll be on the porch or I'll have the door open and all of a sudden a cat walks up on the porch. Meow. And I say, hi, baby. You hungry? 
Hold on. And I'll go get them a cup of milk and I'll get them some tuna or sardines, whatever they like. And then, and, and they're like really mean to other people. And I hear them growling yeah! and hunching their back up. And then I come out, hi baby. They, they read energy like we do. And I went and got a food and milk. And it just was like a baby. Just like, because we don't know what their karma is and what they're going through. Now, I don't know if this is true, but some master, some Buddhist masters teach that people were animals before or, uh, and they might not evolve and stay in the animal world, but some have gone through different races and animals. And then they evolve into some other type of human and a higher being, but you're still connected to them. So I don't know, but I kind of believe it. And I believe that everything's energy first. So when I started to vibe with them and I started to relax in my house and stop being afraid in my own house and afraid to close my eyes. And every time I hear something, I jump out of my sleep. I think they're coming to get me. They started to leave. Like now you hear it's, it's quiet. It's silent in here. <laughs> and I didn't move and I didn't run. Um, but I released the fear and surrendered to the experience. I'm not saying they don't walk in and out. I just don't see them or hear them as much. Um, I, I don't see any new bodies around here. I don't see any new droppings, but that was like something that, um, I was embarrassed to tell you, and then I went on and told you, and then people start sharing their rap stories, like, <laughs> like how it happened to them, and I was like, YouTube, one followed you too, and the person on YouTube said it jumped in their chest, like, jumped in his chest, and I'm just like, wow, so they do certain people, they're drawn to them, where they want to sit on you, or, or, or sit by you, or lay in the bed with you, and I was like, yeah, I hope that doesn't happen to me, because then now I need to go to the hospital, because you don't know if they have something. But they were getting like really close. Then I realized that fear was tied to other fears. And whenever you have to deal with a confrontation that's very dangerous. Or you think it might kill you. Whether it's an animal or a human being. Learn to practice with someone that you trust. Whether it's a therapist, life coach, whoever. As well as practice with yourself surrendering to the fear. Surrendering to the horror, surrendering to what if this happens or this person dies, this, this is going to be the end of my world. You don't want to sur surrender to that because you don't want to think about the heartbreak and the heartache. But I had to. It's, it seems like when my grandmother left, when my grandmother physically left in December, a lot of things came up in my life with her, my childhood, and a lot of old fear. And that's what I learned, you guys. Even though you're in a human body, many times fears um, <clears throat> will come to you metaphysically in the forms of animals, situations that might not be human. Because all of the energy is 360, and they try to say we're separate, but we're not. And the more you come into your own vagina power, your own penis power, your own spiritual sexuality, and the higher vibration of yourself as a being, not tissue, because that doesn't last. And you realize you're not that, you're more divine than that. You're just having an experience. And you tap into the higher ethers of all of that. And you stop resisting because... I hadn't, I hadn't seen my grandmother since 2019, right before Nipsey was assassinated. And uh, we didn't speak. And then that's when Nipsey told me, um, you need to check on your grandmother because she's dying this week, preferably Friday because she's dying Friday. And I said, Nipsey, I don't have her number. She, she cut me off. And I started looking for the number. I said, help me get the number. If you said she's dying Friday, which was like um, the day we were talking about it. It was Friday. And I, I found one of my mother's old friends to get the number. And then I called my mother's husband. And he gave me the number. And they were in Texas. And I said to my cousin, I need to. I was told grandma's there. Is that true? She said, yes. I said, is she dying? She said, that's true. I said, they told me she was, the spirits told me she was dying today, Friday. 
it was December 17th, this past December. And I said, she's leaving today. Can I please tell her that I forgive her and that I love her so she can leave knowing that I don't hate her anymore and that I love her? And she was like, Alexa, she just left like an hour ago, hour, two hours ago. She left. And she talked to her great, great grandbaby on the video chat that she was so in love with. And she closed her eyes. And I'm like, hmm. And when she did that, she's been here in Atlanta and I've been cooking the things that she loves. Sweet potato pie, collard greens, macaroni cheese. Even though I'm not as good at cooking her, I'm like, you got to give me the uh, recipe because I'm not as good as you, but I'll try <laughs> because that's what you want. And she started talking to me about the things that she knows she hurt me and she wouldn't say because she's very proud and she's very arrogant and it's got to be my way and you're wrong and I'm always right. She starts to open up this stuff. As she's opening this floodgate of things and she's apologized. And when she was in her body, she was too proud to apologize. Once she was out of it, she saw it differently. And she apologized. And as she does, all these things come up in me. And I break down things I didn't have the courage to face. And then the rats come. And I'm looking around saying, Grandma, are you here? Mama. Where well, it was never Grandma. It was Mama. She, was, she raised me. My mother was no good. And so my grandmother was always there. And I saw her looking and she said, you, you can't run from this. My grandmother never ran from anything. She might have ran from her feelings, but she physically never ran from anybody. Because I saw her beat men's asses. So she was big, like a, a Amazon woman. So she was the size of a lot of men, or bigger than a lot of men. She never ran physically, but she ran mentally and emotionally. And she stayed with me. And she said, you're going to do this. And I said, Mom, I, all this stuff is coming out since you left me. And she said, but I left you physically, but I'm here with you more. I'm, I'm, I'm more present with you out of the body than I was in the body. And I know the things I did wrong and I fucked up and I'm, I'm here with you now. And she's like totally different. Her energy, I would see the energy she shows me all day, maybe little bits of it every, here and now throughout the day. She's that way now and she's transcended the body and the boundaries and the hell of the body and the temptation of the body. Now she just wants to ascend and do the right thing. And she said, for me to do the right thing, I have to make it right with you. She says, you have to stay here with the rats. And I said, is this you? Is this a part of you? She's like, yeah. What we don't know and what I'm learning is many times we see things in other forms, people, places, and things. Maybe a thing, maybe an animal. And you're like, how could this be a part of me and my life and my experience? This never happened to me. This is not supposed to happen to me. But maybe that's the form you need to see it in. So I laid in it, surrendered to it, maybe cried, but I set to force myself to dive into the pool of fear, embrace it as if it was good, as if it was love. Because one thing that, that I know when you have a lot of fear, there's also some part of yourself that you reject and you don't embrace and you don't trust and you're insecure. Because when you totally love you and you run into something and you don't know how the fuck this is going to turn out because it's so fucked up or somebody dies or you get hurt and you're about to die and you're terrified of leaving that body and leaving that experience. When you have no fear, when you have no insecurity, even though you don't know you're going to physically die at that moment and you're getting your, the, 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 the most important thing to do is surrender and then be proactive and get all of your affairs and insurances in order and talk to your children or whoever you love. Even though you're not sure you never died before and stayed in the shit and you're not coming back in this experience, that's a scary thing to think about. But if you surrender to it and you deal with your fear and you face it head on in insecurity and denial, it's something that shifts in the universe and in the metaphysical aspect, in the ethers of your mind, the invisible parts of your mind that starts to shift the experience. Let's say you deal with mental science and the metaphysics 
of the physical situation. And then you go into that level of the mind and you see it as it is and you see it as you want it to be. And you focus on the outcome of that and whatever the dysfunction or dis-ease in the body part is, even if it's a shot, gunshot, a stab, dis-ease, freak accident, car accident, you'd be surprised how powerful you really are. Even if you take that fear energy, transmute it, turn it into power and faith and see the body or the situation dematerializing and rematerializing. Fuck the middle and how it's going to happen and who's going to do the shit and, and how who's going to bring this miracle about. You only see the end result. You're not in a casket. You're not full of disease. You're not crippled. You're not losing a limb. You only see the end as you, at the present moment, surrender to the experience. And you take the fear, the insecurity, the pain, and the shame, and you transmute that into faith, into knowing you're a powerful being, along with the beings that brought you here and pulling all the energy from the universe. And you put it only into visualizing and putting all of your power and energy into the end result. That's it. Fuck the middle experience. Fuck your journey there. That's none of your business. God, your ancestors, universe, whatever magic you do, those entities will handle the middle. You just focus on the end and what you want to see in the end. And you'd be surprised how that shifts, how that energy shifts. And that's what I learned from Mr. Rat. Yeah, Mr. Rat and Cat and they eat my soap food. That's what, yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm saying, why don't you get out what you leave? No, I'll leave when I have no fear. And when I've healed whatever it is that's been made me look at through this. And I feel bigger. Like all of the limitations I put on myself and other people put on me, I don't listen to anymore. I feel taller in the invisible, etheric self that materialized the physical, that never it's not going to stay. It's going to leave. But if you can become powerful in this body instead of letting the body die like my grandmother and then see on the other side and like my father, who I now see, they are very tall. Like Nipsey is, is a god. You're already god and goddesses. But many times because of the false beliefs of society, you don't know. And they tell you you're nothing, you're dumb, whatever. Like I, I, I heard my whole life, and all. Unfortunately, my exes made me feel and said, "It is walking through the fire," like Shaka Khan says, "to the limit, to the wall, being pushed to the wall, and you have nobody." I had nowhere to run, and my grandmother said, "You're not running." I'm here. I see it. You're not gonna die. You're not gonna catch COVID. You're not gonna catch rabies from the rats. But I'm going to stand here and you're going to grow up in that part and you're going to be healed and you're going to stand in this with them running around. That was really disgust. I was so angry at them. But I was angry at myself because I felt that I had created the experience. Even if it was subliminally, I created the experience by feeling like nothing. And having people around me treat me and tell me, you're nothing. And you're crazy and the stuff you're saying. And you, you say you talk to dead people and you feed them. I, I sat in all of that the past couple of months with the animals. <laughs> I'm living in animal kingdom. You know what? I was so pissed at the rat. I told the, the, um, the exterminator came. He said, why don't you get a cat? And I said, no, because I don't think I'm going to be here. I would love to get a black cat. Those are my favorites. Then I said, you know what? To be honest with you, I really want to buy a snake. And he turns around. He goes, what? I said, they eat rats. And they'll go in the walls at night. I'll just let it go. And I'll have my problem. And I have my pet snake. And I, I that might be more effective than a rat. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I talked to one of my friends the other day. She has one. She has, a, I think, a boa. And I said, hmm. That may be a, a cue because I have statues of the um, the snakes and I might, I'm going to look into it. They say insects and animals help take the offerings. 
they do, but as well as the crows. I love crows. Whenever it's been times I go outside and it's a whole bunch of them sitting on the wire um, to, to the light pole and they're talking to each other. And when I come out, they look at me and they look at each other and they look at me and they talk. That's either somebody's getting ready to leave here in the body, get up and go to the other side and come back and be in that realm. Or they're warning you. They're warning you about something. They are the intermediaries. They're the intercessors, remember, between here and the other side. So I thought I'd share that a little bit with you. Even though some people are probably thinking, she's gross. She's really nasty to do it. You know, I, what else could I do? Because I felt that if I left to go stay at a hotel, I'd come back, it would be worse. Because let me tell you what I noticed. How can I say it? And I'm probably going to, I'm going to teach on this, like death energy. When somebody sends a death ray to you and they try to do psychic magic to kill you in your house and they send it in your house, through your phone, through your computer, basically through the air. And they try to send different demonic entities to kill you in your house or kill you in your sleep. When I was poisoned 2012 and in 2013 by somebody that I trusted in taking their herbs, I got very ill. And what I noticed is, as I many times, when I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand up, I could barely talk, all of my glands were swollen, my body was huge. And I kept asking my ancestors, and I saw my father's face. And I said, Daddy, am I dying? He said, No, but there are lessons for you to learn if you want to stay here. There are things you're supposed to be that your mother prevented you from being, and you're going to have to embrace the spirit world. And everybody's telling you you're crazy, you shouldn't embrace. I'm going to take you out. And he snatched me in and I went to the other side. And I started to see things I didn't know exist. I just have to tell everybody. And um, my house, it was like I didn't live here. That's why I knew, and people at other told me they could see, they said they tried to put a death spell on you to kill you through the food and through a spell that they put on the herbs and they're sending to your house. And I could feel it. My house got very cold. And like in a horror movie, my ceiling in my bedroom and all of the bedrooms that I could not use because I was too sick and my son wasn't here, the, the ceilings were full of cobwebs, spider webs. It looked like a crisscross network, like a whole information highway of spider webs. They filled the attic, they filled my house like nobody was living here. Like, you know, when, when people don't live in a house and they put sheets all over the furniture and cobwebs and spiders start to live there because they can sense a human was not there. But I was here. And what I realized is when people do black magic and they try to take a person out, they will actually start to kill the person. Hey, Chloe, thank you, baby. They will try to kill the person spiritually and pull the soul out of the person. And when animals don't sense the person's there, the house will become like a haunted house, a empty house. And I was here, at least I was physically here, but I didn't understand, but I lived it. And that's how I started to see it. And now, even though I'm still having illnesses off and on, but I fight and I understand what's going on. I haven't, I, I had took a broom. My grandmother was saying, take a mop and take a broom and just wipe the ceiling clean and mop everything and disinfect everything. I haven't done that for a few years and I'm looking at my ceiling. It's not like that. Because as the ether and the aura and the spirit man, the higher self comes back to sit in the body. If you say the body, I am claiming my life and bitch, I'm going to stay here until I motherfucking get ready, bitch. And it's on whatever the fuck it is, bitch. It's on the motherfucking poppy. I ain't leaving bitch till I say so. Spirit sits back in you. Because you claim your motherfucking throne. And I've had a lot of people try to take me out that shit. And I didn't want to believe that shit was real. I'm like, oh, I don't, then you better protect yourself. I protect myself against what? That's not real. I want to be this good person. Be positive. No, 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 no. They'll tear your fucking ass up. Weird shit starts to happen. Like the rest. Whenever something, your life gets out of control, it gets really crazy. Somebody's usually doing that. Unless you're messy, and I'm not messy, unless you make me messy. 
I'll be messy with you and start shit with you because you started with me and me responding to the shit. I'm messy, bitch, and I'm going to get right with your ass. Other than that, I don't bother anybody. People just don't like me and don't like what the fuck I say. It's healing, but I usually, like, I want to cut it off. Oh, it's, it, it's, it's like the whole chest was fucked up, remember? And all red and bruised when I had the red wig on, that dye. Doesn't get along with me for whatever reason. I, usually, back in the day, I would just cut that thing off. And just compress it with silicone strip and let it heal. I'm trying to be more gentle. So I won't do it. But it's tiny. But it's like, it's chalk. I just have a little makeup on it. But I let you all see it. So as I continue to heal it, when you see it's gone, it's taking a little bit more time. Because I don't want to be mean and just do surgery on it. Uh, huh. So I'm even really, really gentle with the lightener. And the, I'm just peeling it a little bit because I want to get to know it. And I, I want you to see the experience. So I'm going to be kinder. Kinder. What do you mean? It's like a night and day. I, I don't know. I just where I'm at. I just don't want to dig in it. Um, because it wouldn't be here. If I had done that, it would be gone by now. I'm kind of thinking about it. But I'm just like, fuck it. I, I mean, I don't do so much hell. I just don't want to be mean to myself. I've had enough people be mean to me. You know. <laughs> so I'm trying to do it differently. But you know what? I, you know what I will do? That I should have done, I hadn't done. Put the silicone compression, the compression sheets. That will help to press it down because my skin keloids and it gets hypertrophic. So the scars raise. It's really thick. The tissue, you see, my skin is thinner and smooth, but that's thick. It doesn't hurt or anything, but that's just my genes. And it's just thick. So that's what I'm going to do. Instead of cutting it, I'm going to put the compression, the scar compression sheets on it. I mean, I let them all heal naturally, but see, if I had done what I did to the whole chest, immediately started compressing and exfoliating, that's natural too. There's nothing wrong with exfoliating your skin. Um, and pressed it, you wouldn't be able to see it. I just been through going through so much hell. I'm like, I right, fuck it, just do what you do. But I gotta do that because if I don't, it's gonna stay there and it's gonna continue to look the different color of my chest and it's gonna look like a thick knot. It's just like a thick knot. It's really thick and tough. It's it's not hurting. It's not. Um, raw, but my skin does that. So if I don't squeeze this thing down and start exfoliating, it's going to be there forever. So that's not natural to me. I'm sorry. I don't want to walk around with that on me. I like to show my tits. People ask me to see my tits, you know, <laughs> and my cleavage. I don't want to every time show you this and you see that shit there. So at least I'm letting you see it because of my products. And as you see it disappear, you will know that how my products work and I use them. So anyway, Cause I haven't eaten and Shannon brought me some food and, and some juice so I can drink my juice. I love juice. I'm going to do this to, to him. All right, you see, can you see them? Aren't they pretty? I don't know what you're seeing behind my back. I don't usually see it until I go back and rewatch. Do you see anything around them? Are they dancing? Do you see any light or orb around them? I love Nipsey's candles because he comes around them when he's not busy, if he's here, and you see the beautiful glow, excuse me, and the aura of them. So I don't know if you see it. And then I got two more back there. <laughs> so now this stuff is kind of calming down in here. <laughs> I don't have so much non-human company with, with fur and feet, four feet. We can light a little bit. So. And since my stuff isn't thawed, my dessert isn't thawed, I was going to have some dessert with you and him. I'll do it tomorrow because it's too frozen for me to cut it and eat it. It'll hurt my teeth. I saw I'm irrit I got my, I irritated, cut my hand, so that's why I got the plastic underneath. Let me hold my hair back because I don't want it to burn. We're going to do a little. And I, I feel like I have company though. And the air is moving really good through here because I cannot breathe the um, smoke. I'm already dealing with my sinuses and stuff. But I, I wanted, he just wanted the light and he wanted the love. And I love to give it to him because, you know, when people are out of their body, they can't physically do anything for themselves. But he loves the light and he loves the blue sage. So I only like blue sage for King Nipsey Hustle. So I wanted to share some with him. Oh, I just felt somebody coming here. Mm -hmm.
eyes. Hi, baby. Was he? And then one day, one magic day, he passed my way. He spoke to me of many things, fools and kings. This he said to me, I love your ear pierce. The greatest thing you ever love. I'm trying to sing, but you know I've had sinus problems, so don't laugh. <laughs> Is jaw and throat problems to love and be loved in return. I love you, babe. I love you, Hermes. I love you, babe. Because you're mine. The greatest thing. Oh, I'm going to have to put this down in a minute. You ever learned is just to love. Thank you, child. Oh, I can't put and be loved in return. Unforgettable. That's what you are. Let me get around. That's what you are. And forevermore. Oh, near or far. Like the songs of love, they cling to me. How the thought of you Arius, speaks things to me like never before. Has someone been more unforgettable? Oh boy. <laughs> In every way. You see, he likes love songs. Oh, shit. You see, I didn't have to keep lighting it when I sing love songs. He likes love songs. <laughs> and forevermore. Ah, you see this? I, I, I. That's how you'll stay. That's how you'll stay. That's why, darling. <laughs> It's incredible that someone so unforgettable thinks that I am unforgettable too. I love you, Air Pierce. Joseph Ashkenaz. He sang to you, my baby. Your baby. Can you speak it, baby? <laughs> Unforgettable. Y'all see that is so pretty. In every way. Do you, can you see the blue like I see? It's so pretty. Do you see that? And forevermore. And forevermore. Can you see what I see? That's how you'll stay. That's how you'll stay. I love you, Aries. It's 
it's incredible. I can't see you comment. Can you all see what I'm seeing? Let my eye pantry. Do you see how pretty and blue? You see the colors there? Let someone so unforgettable thinks that I am unforgettable to It's so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I love you. You're so sweet. You're so special. You're so beautiful. Thank you for letting us see your lights. But ay ay ay. That's hot. <laughs> Thank you for letting us see your light. so great lying to my love that's what I'll be so my spirit can be free he likes I like I love Phyllis Hyman as you can see <laughs> to the everlasting moment of love I feel your symphony so strong and so pure it echoes all through me I am so sure like we were meant to be I, I have to be careful because of smoke that's why I'm missing in the smoke Sharing this love we share. <laughs> you be my love, and I'll be yours too. Hi, baby. You like to meet me on the moon? There's a spark of magic in your eyes. Candy lane appears each time you smile. And you, I know it's smoky. I don't know if you can see the colors. Never thought that fairy tales come true but they come true when i'm near you hi baby hi baby you're a genie in disguise full of wonder and surprise and <laughs> you see i act silly when y'all not around i be here singing to him that's your pica you love it i love that song meet me on the moon i love phyllis hyman mm, I said, i'm gonna practice it and i'm gonna go to the studio i'm gonna sing it and I'm dedicated to him because I love I love it I love her and he likes old school music even though he's 33 you're the one that I been waiting for forever <laughs> and Growing strong. Yeah. If I could, I'd catch a 
falling star to shine oh to shine on you so while know where you are ah Okay. <laughs> okay. All the rainbows in your favorite shade to show I love you. There he is. Thinking of you. Okay, my sage is gone. There's a spark of magic in your eyes. Can the land appears each time you smile? There he is. <laughs> I know. Whenever you notice, you notice how I always have the problem lighting it, and then I sing to him. And I tell him I love him. I sing the love song. He goes, whoosh. <laughs> Can he spoiled. Can the land appears each time you smile. Never thought that fairy tales come true. But they come true. When I'm near you, yeah, I I I, I feel him. <laughs> My stick is gone, as you can see. Ah, I love you, I love you, sweet baby. You like my scarf? It's a crypt scarf. You like it? Yeah. Is that a yes? Okay. You see, it's all gone. It's smoked down. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's breaking up. Oh, uh, wow. That little piece there. I love it. I love to give him energy. So you have to know when you're going to have an ancestor altar for somebody, when you're going to give them an offering, make sure you get what they like. Make sure you play the music that they love. Make sure you have what they love to eat. And what they love to drink. Um, even if it's a TV show. Mm. I'm all congested so I can't really sing too good. And it's smoky. Ha. I'll try though. And this is. Ah. Oh. Got to spark down to the bottom. Baby. I want to just spend some time with you. I want to say hello to you. It's just a couple of days. Happy mm. Mm hmm in the moon. Please don't be late. You know how I hate to wait. You're so great. <laughs> you were just saying, Charlie. <laughs> what you say, Charlie? She told me that must be his jam. Wait a minute. <laughs> sages i'm trying to think of something else he likes he just he likes love songs he's spoiled he likes me to sing to him and i haven't been able to the past couple of months because i've been so sick and my throat has been so messed up my lungs were messed up so i guess he's enjoying it because he misses me singing to him and i was singing to him earlier he's like sing to me tonight i said okay he's like where my crib bag i'm like okay <laughs> so i had to try to dress it up i took some pictures for you i'm trying to say what what else? Um, he he just he likes love songs. He's sweet. He's a sweetheart. Um, I'm sorry I hadn't eaten nothing. My sister Shannon got me some food. Thank you. Yes, that's that Crips go. And then you're singing in the flame. Didn't it? You see? Now you see it. So it wasn't my imagination. You know what he does because I sang it and I liked it today. And so I started kept practicing like five or six times. You know what I'm surprised he likes old songs. 
He likes stuff from my era. So he's an old soul. You know, he's a 33-year-old body. He likes the young stuff. He mixes the stuff with the old stuff. And you know who I love, too? When I was growing up, Peebo Bryson. He likes one of those songs. So he was picking a song, and he loves Angela Winbush. He loves Angela and the Isleys and stuff like that. <laughs> so I got to practice that. Um, and he loves Minnie Ripperton, Loving You. You know, He's very spoiled. Aren't you? Aren't you a spoiled baby? You're a sweet baby, though. You like for me to sing love songs to you. Say, I was trying to think of a... Um, mm -hmm, love you is another morning without you. Is another day will I get through it without breaking down? You see, that's just a little piece. Haven't seen the sun since you've been gone. Like my heart, I lost it when you left me. And it can't be found. That's a song, if you, have, you don't know what it is. Um, People Bryson, Can You Stop the Rain? I love People Bryson's um, voice. This is about to fall apart. I don't know if I want to shake a chance. You see, I got the little stick. Yeah. Yes. Baby, can you stop the rain from falling? Won't you chase my clouds away? I can't hear. I'm trying to get this up the word. Kissing another day. Only you can stop these tears from falling. I can't face another day. Baby, can you stop? Can you, can you stop the rain? Oh. Everywhere I go, I feel you there. Like my heart, I lost. I, I, I got to write the words and, and sit here when I sing it. You left me, it can't be found. Oh, how can I go on? Baby, I've been living on me. Oh, memories of you and me. You, is there any chance? I just can't believe you're not lonely too. Just for me and you. You see this? This is just a tiny piece. Oh, okay. It fell off the stick. <laughs> okay. It's just pieces. Okay. I guess I, I, guess I better stop. He's. <laughs> Thank you for entertaining me. For in, in, <laughs> make time with me. Make time with him. <laughs> yes. He's a really old soul. Because you see how. I'll be sitting there with that. And you've seen plenty of times I'll be like. Eh, 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 eh. And then it goes out. And then I start to sing a love song to him. <laughs> I'm glad you got to see, <laughs> see that. And I don't know if you notice. Aren't the candles beautiful? They're, so, they're probably looking still to me. They're high. They're steady. But even in candles, spirits will give magic messages in candles. So I have to look back and see what they're looking like um, when I turn it off. And I'm going to finish his reading. Unfortunately, we have to get into some things because I'm revisiting the shooting and the guns and the bullets. Since I was already right about the bullets. 
I know, girl, I got my plastic gloves and my, my, that's why they like this torn because they're like for my sages and they burn and burn the holes. I love it though. I love, oh yeah, what I was saying, I'll finish it quickly when I get well, better to teach. People have asked me about the uh, psychic classes and talking to spirits, connecting to their loved ones and speaking to the physically dead yet still alive and I want to go into that with you uh, the people that want to be taught the people that want to have private classes with me and even one-on-one -on -one classes with me in psychic development and psychic self-defense we're going to do that hopefully I'm well enough for or before the summer I just have to really get me well because I'm I, even now the I'm like congested on one side of my face and my nose and so that's why I can't sing as much and then the smoke is in here on top of it so I gotta go clear my head I'm gonna eat a little bit I'm gonna drink a little bit and I'm gonna go night night because I'm tired I had a long day my head I've had a pounding migraine for two days it went away a little bit yesterday but now I'm feeling congestion coming up that's my cue I love to sing to him I love for you that love to share the experience with me um and so we're going to do some more because it's what he wants and i love him and i like to honor him and we still have not had a trial for nipsey hustle we still haven't had uh, justice for him and we still have to look at that and see how it goes we have to see what's going on which i know like I have said to you before, police are involved, LAPD, the feds are in, tied into this with informants, and a lot of lies and secrecy, and a judge, a couple of judges are tied into this, and you know, Eric Holder's lawyer became a judge, so she's not going to want to get justice, she's going to want to help get Eric Holder free, we have to go through these things, I have to go back to the bullets, he wants me to go back to the bullets, and the other killers involved. I've always told you there were more killers involved. This is a stooge, a pigeon. This is staged. And uh, there's, th there, there's still things. Hi, I felt him so strong walk up on me. Like the rap niggas video I told you. Look at that video and I want to know where that building was and where it was filmed because he told me it's something he wants me to know about that building and the address. I'm going to be breaking that down, but first I have to listen to what he has to say. It's quite amazing about that building on I ain't nothing, fuck nothing like you fucking rap niggas, hustle man, a shooter, that's a fact, nigga. That and the other one, uh, um, um, Victory Lap, but he's out on the beach. He's at the pyramids in Tulum, and you see a similar. He's also in the hood, and he's walking down the street. He's at the corner store, and... He's sitting on a some concrete steps on an apartment building. Some of the guys from All Money Inn and Sixties are there. Some of the same guys are there in the rap niggas video around him when he has the bulletproof vest on. It's something he wants me to know that I have to keep passing the messages until he gets tired of me passing the messages. I'm going to pass the messages. That's what I feel is the right thing for me to do. To help him and I'm not tired of doing it and I've been doing it for three years straight from March 31st 2019 to his anniversary on March 31st 2022 and I'm still riding for the nigga I'm still rocking for this nigga and I'm gonna stay in this motherfucking rock till the wheels fall off until we get where we need to get and we go where we need to go and I'm honored to be one of the ones to be a part of this experience okay so I'm gonna go night night because I need to rest I push myself too much and my head, I'm, I better clear it out because I'm already feeling pressure. And then, too, I'm breathing all the smoke of the sage. And for you all are new to this, thank you for sharing the experience <laughs> with us that we love to do it. And we love to pray for him and honor him and send him good energy. I, I love him. And, you know, I told a little bitty lie because when I did the first reading, I said, I don't know him. And I had heard his music. And I was embarrassed to say that I had a crush on him since, like, 2016. And I was secretly watching, you know, and checking and everything. And, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And all them kind of things. And, you know. <laughs> so it was a pleasure to do. Because I thought he was fine anyway. I'm so used to the variety. 
doctors take everything i will yeah you know what yeah feeling better because i got to get back to work you know i've been dealing with this and the trauma and the rats and cleaning the house and disinfecting everything and and i got to get myself together because people want their products i owe people their products people want readings and uh, i haven't forgotten about you that ordered your stuff your stuff is packed in the box i just need to put your address on it and get somebody to ship it for me it's time to get fit back to business I, I love you all too and thank you for having this mini session because you know how we do we i sing five six sometimes ten songs we go for hours just loving him and paying tribute to him uh, but i i gotta get me together but i wanted to show him some love to let him know i'm here and i love him and i, I haven't forgotten no matter what i go through that's my road dog too. He be right with me. So I'm going to put in some work for him. Even if it's a little bit because of what's going on. I'm still going to do that instead of nothing at all. I just say we can do our dessert tonight because it's frozen. But we'll do it soon. I love you. Talk to you soon.